and he did give out of his abundant wealth to the lord and he could have just said oh my god i am such a good worshipper because i am giving so much money to the lord look at how i am giving from my uh, cattle from my herds from my uh, all my gold and silver i am giving so much to the lord and yet he said that is not enough he he stood up and he is like i need to go personally and i need to dance because david already had a team of worship leaders and he had very skilled musicians and yet david said that is not enough i have to personally come and do this and he got involved and he started dancing so much so that people got embarrassed of him his own wife was ashamed of how david was dancing because he is the one who has blessed me you will not understand my sweat you will not understand my pain you will not understand where i have come from but i know where i have come from i i know what i have gone through and because of which today i am grateful and that is why scripture says let everything that has breath praise the lord how many of you are breathing today the day that you lose your breath after that you don't have to but till the day that you have breath every time you take in a fresh breath of oxygen into your lungs you you are now obligated to give to the lord it is obligation for us to now serve him to praise him to glorify him hallelujah and i and i can see how this church is a worshiping church any church that is a worshiping church it attracts the presence of god and when we attract the presence of god it also brings in the power of god and when the power of god comes his provision starts flowing the problem is we directly want the provisions we don't want the power or the presence and and today i am telling you church if we can fall in love with the presence of jesus if we can just come to church every week after week to just say lord i love you so much
because six days of the week you're preparing your worship you're preparing you've been already worshiping in your home and then when you come to church you can't hold it back anymore and you give your 100% to Jesus and now you want to just jump and and dance and scream and lift your hands and give to the lord and 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 i tell this to my church very often that whenever you feel that you have a backache that is the best time to stand and worship the lord when you are sweating too much that's the best time to dance and worship the lord please don't think that the enemy is after the electricity in this place that he wants more electricity in hell so he is trying to steal No 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 he wants your worship So if he can just puncture your worship then he feels he's successful But we are a church that will not allow him to win Hallelujah it is it is my joy my privilege to be here with all of you i i keep saying my church my church like bangalore is my church but this is also my church i i i know that there was a season where i was a pastor of our church in bangalore and then the lord moved me out of there and now there is another man of god who is pastoring there and then the lord asked me uh, through my spiritual parents and and our ministry to go and pastor every one of our his nearness churches so i am also a pastor here so this is also my church so i am not here as a guest pastor so that is why i didn't wait for pastor to introduce me because i can come any time i want i can just come i can see so many familiar faces and i can also see new faces and we welcome all of you to church to his nearness church if you're here for the very first time we invite you to come and taste this jesus more often with us Amen. Amen. Can I teach you the word this morning? Are you all ready to hear the word this morning? Everybody? Yes. We are not here just to give to the Lord. We are also here to receive some instructions from the Lord. So when we come to church, we come with uh, we will remove all the ear wax making sure that our hearing ability is at its best so every preconceived notion about god 
everything that we we have as hurts and injuries in our heart we have to let go of them keep it aside for some time so that we can receive god's word as it is that is why jesus said lay your burdens at my feet Because if you are carrying your own burdens, you will not be able to receive what I want to give you. So when we give our burdens to him, we are able to receive his burdens and his heart for our lives. Amen. So this morning I'm going to teach you from the book of Jude chapter 1 and verse 14 onwards. The book of Jude chapter 1 and verse 14. The Bible says, Now Enoch the seventh from Adam. How many of you have heard about Enoch in the church? If you've been in church for long enough, you would have heard about this man who walked with God. Adam walked with God. And yet he failed. And... The, this man called Enoch, who was the seventh from Adam, he walked with God in such a ferocious manner that he, instead of going from, you know, good to bad, he went from bad to good. When Adam walked with God, he went from eternity, because Eden was eternal, he went from eternity to a limited time zone. When Enoch walked with God, he went from a limited time zone into eternity. And that is why, because he walked with God in such close measure, he was able to look at the end of time. Enoch prophesied about the second coming of Jesus. Enoch is not just talking about how Jesus will be born as a, a child of a virgin and be in Bethlehem and be crucified. He is talking about the second coming of Jesus. And the Bible says, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, he prophesied about these men also. And, and said, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. So, so two, two things that I want you to focus on. His prophecy was about how Jesus is returning. Behold, the Lord comes. And then he says, it is also about these certain people who are living on the earth. Is 
It says he prophesied about these men. And, and it says that this is the prophecy. When he is prophesying about these certain category of people, he prophesies saying the Lord Jesus is coming. And when he comes, he's not coming alone. He's got to come with ten thousands of his saints. Not angels. With his saints. Do you know where we will be? Not on the earth. We will be with him. Because we are saints of God. We are not going to be here waiting for him to come back. In fact, when he is coming back, we will immediately hear it in our ears and we will go join him. And we will come with him. We will be one of those saints that will come with him. So my dear friends, please remember that when you look at the world around you and you feel discouraged, remember this prophecy by Enoch. That the Lord is coming. That the Lord is coming with the saints. The solution to every problem that we see around us is that Jesus is coming. The solution is not God give me a better car. The solution is not something which is temporary. Our ultimate solution is that Jesus, he is coming. Why is he coming? Verse 15. It says, he is coming to execute judgment and to convict everybody. To execute judgment. And to convict all people of their sins. So when Jesus returns, nobody will be able to stand up and say, no, 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 I am a good guy. See, when a, when a very very righteous person comes into the room. Every unrighteous person will immediately get convicted of their sins. And that's what happened to Peter. When Jesus was with him, and Jesus helped him catch fishes. The Bible says, Peter said, please depart from me because I am a sinner. All of a sudden, his unrighteousness, it, it, just, it just started hurting him. And the Bible says when Jesus comes, 
it is going to execute judgment on all sinners and he is going to convict them of their ungodliness. I want you to read that very carefully. It says to execute judgment on all and to convict all who are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds and to and which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. What is he coming to judge? Ungodly people. I thank God that there is no ungodly people in this room. We are all saints of God. Yet, can I describe ungodly people for you? So that you can just compare and say, wait, 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 wait. I'm a saint. Why am I behaving like an ungodly person? And the Bible says the first thing that he will convict them is of their actions, the works, the deeds that they do. So when Jesus returns, it says to execute judgment on all and to convict all who are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds. So sometimes we can be in the church and still have some ungodly actions. Sometimes we can be worshipping Jesus and still have some ungodly works. I'm not criticizing you. I know I have done that. And that is why I want to remind you that when Jesus comes, he is going to highlight all these problematic areas. And that is why it is necessary that we sort it out today, right now. Apostle John said it like this. That in, in 1 John chapter 2, my dear children do not sin. But if you do sin then don't worry, you have an advocate for yourself in heaven. First of all, don't sin. But if you do sin, if you do have some ungodly actions, then you already have a lawyer who is willing to take your case. And you don't have to pay the price. He's already paid the price on the cross. So this morning, I'm not here to make you feel bad about your sin. I'm here to preach the good news. The good news is that if you come to this Jesus, Jesus, 
then not only will he fix you he will go to god and fix your relationship back with god the bible says right now he is sitting at the right hand of the father and do you know what he is talking about me He is not talking about the elections in India. He is not bothered who becomes the Prime Minister. But still he is concerned about my life. And he is interceding for me. He is talking about me. He is discussing my case with the father. So my dear friends, if you are feeling like God doesn't love you, that's not true. If you feel, oh, I am too much of an ungodly person, God will never want to talk to me, that's not true. Heaven is discussing your case. Which means we are important people. If, if you know that the president and the prime minister of India is talking about you, you wouldn't you feel special? Would you, would you not be talking to everybody about it? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be on all your social media channels? And yet, we live in hiding and shame. The Bible says... If you have sinned, if you have some ungodly actions, then don't run from Jesus. You run to Jesus. Anybody who has, who has dealt with crime, they will tell you, if you have had any problems, you don't run away from the lawyer, you run to the lawyer. Because it is only your lawyer who can help you right now. And I don't know if you have understood how a lawyer works. When you go and speak to the lawyer, you don't go and hide your problems from your lawyer. If you have killed somebody, you tell them you killed somebody. Because your lawyer, he is not going to go tell the whole world. It is, there is a private confidentiality between you and your lawyer. But if you hide it from your lawyer, then your lawyer will not be able to defend you in the court. But if you go and tell your lawyer, yeah, it is true. I stole this money. Or I said like that. Or I did this. When you confess your sins to your lawyer, Your lawyer says, okay, let me study this case. Uh, 
and i will try to find a loophole and i will try to make sure you don't go to jail for this and when we come to jesus that's why apostle john said when you come to jesus you confess your sins to him and then jesus says i have a loophole for this is the fact that when i died on the cross i didn't i only didn't die for your past sins i also died for your present and your future sins and he goes to the father and he says this guy is innocent this guy is righteous this guy is pure there is no no guilt in him because as soon as he confessed his sins to me my sinless precious blood it washed him off of every guilt every pain every sin Amen. Amen. So Jesus he is coming to to pick out the ungodly people and to judge them for their ungodly actions. He is coming to judge the ungodly actions. Amen. Amen. The second thing is it says the things which are committed in an ungodly way an ungodly manner dusra nyay dene ka kya baat hai har us kaam jo anyay se hua hai the the way in which certain things were done un sare paap jo anyay se kari gayi hai so in other words on the in the front it looks like i did the right thing but behind the scenes the motive or the manner in which i did it was not right so when we look at people we only look at their actions he is going to church on time first week of every month he puts his tights there is uh, no meetings that he misses that is how we judge somebody but god he judges your heart he is judging the way in which you did something he is not just talking about how high you jumped when you came to worship god he is he is trying to check how did you prepare for that worship what was your motive behind coming and worshiping is it so everybody takes your picture or did you do that because we you want to be given more opportunity to worship in church did you do what you did in your office so that everybody in your office will praise you clap for you
or did you do it because you genuinely wanted to do the right thing because jesus is coming not only to judge your actions he's also going to judge your motives or the manner in which you do, did certain things because man they will judge your outside and when i look at your outside you look very happy you may look content but god he looks at your heart god is looking at all the murmuring that is going on inside all the complaining that even your wife hasn't heard your husband hasn't heard god can hear all the all the desires that you haven't even acted upon god still knows that's that's why jesus said you don't have to sleep with somebody you just have to look with lust because the desire in your head that is enough to 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 uh, to to convict you of your sin so god is not just saying hey even though you had the desire you didn't do it so good job we are we we have to also be convicted of our motives and our manners not just that i did the right thing how did you reach there when you had to come to the stage how did you what path did you take they were you pushing aside everybody and stamping on everybody's feet or did you take a very humble route did you did you push yourself to the front or were you elevated by god so the so the manner the way the path is very important so can we ask the lord to purify our desires purify my path my the, the manner the way in which i do certain things purify that we can do godly things in an ungodly manner there are so many your lips are singing but your heart is so far away from me your stomach is fasting but but your heart is so far away from me what is the point of doing good works if there is no godly motives or manners Amen. Amen. So God is going to not only purify our actions, He's also going to purify our manners. The third thing, are you ready for the third thing? It says, and of all the harsh things 
which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So what is the first thing that he will judge? Ungodly actions. Second thing that he will judge is ungodly manners. The third thing that he is going to judge is ungodly communication. Sometimes I, I feel like one thing that we don't teach enough in the church is the importance of your conversations. Because your communication, your words are as important as the desires of your heart and as the actions of your hand. Same as that and even as the same as our actions. Sometimes when you are angry, you say things that you don't really mean. When we are upset or when we are discouraged, we say things that later we think, why did I say that? And God pays attention to every word that comes out of your mouth. The Bible says there are ungodly sinners who have spoken things and they didn't speak against their situation. They were speaking against God. See, when, when the Israelites, when they were talking about how their food was bad, you may think they are just talking about food. But God said, they are murmuring against me. Hmm. So every word that you utter with your mouth, you can be either glorifying God or dishonoring God. God takes it very personally when you speak words that are complaining, that have all this murmuring in it. Can we read verse 16? It says in verse 16, These people, they are grumblers. Everybody say grumblers. Can you read it in Hindi? These verse 16? See how many of those sins are conversations? So there are one, two, three, four, four sins mentioned there. Out of the four, three is about how you talk. Grumbling, how do you do with your mouth? Complaining, how do you do with your mouth? Flattering, how do you do with your mouth? And, and, the, and the Bible is saying, your communication, your speech, your conversation, it has to be in, a, it has to be in accordance to the godliness that is on the inside of you. I've seen so many very godly people 
who walk in godly actions they their heart is clean their heart is very nice good manners yet when they open their mouth constant complaining constant gossiping constant slandering talking about others constant lying constant ill communication coming out of their mouths and today we have to repent of the words that we speak do you know why it is so important it's because according to the words that you speak you will either live or you will die because life and death are in the power of your words that is why the bible says when you are weak don't say you are weak when you are weak you say i am strong is god telling you to lie is god encouraging that you say something wrong nahi nahi god is saying you have to confess your spiritual truths over your physical realities when you look at your children you are seeing problem maker when you look at your children he is not a good student his intelligence is very low and then you talk about it to your friends to your relatives every family gathering my son he always comes last and you are talking down about your children you may be speaking the physical truth but the bible says let the weak say that they are strong so you have to change how you say it so you have to say no no my child he is my heritage from the lord he is a very sharp guy q because the bible says he is an arrow and in the natural it may not look like that but we believe what god says so we have to change the way we communicate husbands and wives don't talk bad about your spouse even when you know that they are wrong you have to say my husband he is such a blessing nobody wants to say amen to that you know why you can say that it's because the bible says your husband is the head of the house and and if if the head of the house is not good then the whole house is a problem Amen so you have to say no 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 my husband he is the best he is the smartest my husband he 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 is so so good with money my husband he is so kind to our children 
that may be the week when your husband beat up the children but you because when you find weakness you say my husband is strong Amen. Amen. Husbands, likewise, you talk well about your wives. Instead of confessing their weaknesses, confess their strengths. Because we can't be people who come to church and still be grumblers and complainers and be flatterers. It's not enough that you quit drinking and smoking. You also have to quit talking like the drunkards and the smokers. Some people, they talk like they're drunk 24-7. <laughs> Because they are not in their senses. <laughs> Because when I'm saying this, you're like, ah, I know somebody like that. <laughs> But today we have to change. The way we talk has to change. <laughs> Because when Jesus comes, three criteria he will judge actions the manners or the motives and the third is your communication the book of matthew it says you will be convicted or acquitted by every word you speak When you stand before Jesus, he is going to pull out all the words you have spoken on the earth. And you will be judged based on the words you have spoken. Hallelujah. Is this word strengthening you? Is this word giving you some direction for this week ahead? It is very necessary that we understand we are not ungodly people. We are saints. Sometimes we do ungodly things. Sometimes we have ungodly motives. Sometimes we have ungodly words. But we are repenting of all of that. And, and, and we are confessing all of that. And we are changing all of those areas of our lives. Verse 17. It says, but you, beloved... Look at your neighbor and say, Priyo. You are a beloved of the Lord. God looks at you and say, you, you are beloved. And then he says, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So during this week when something like this happens, you have to remember my words. When you find other people who are doing ungodly actions, you need to remember my words. Verse 18, it says, How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. Verse 
The Bible says this will happen in the last days, the last times. So we are already living in the last days. We are waiting for Jesus to return back. We are waiting for Jesus to manifest himself. And so we have to be ready for this manifestation of all these ungodly works, manners and speech. Verse 19 it says, These people, they are sensual persons. And they, they cause divisions not having this spirit. Do you see what it says? That these people that do ungodly actions, ungodly ways and ungodly speech, you know what they do? It says they don't have the spirit. And because of which they live according to their, their soul or their body, their flesh. And so when they come among you, they will cause divisions. They will divide a husband from a wife. They will divide churches against churches. If, God, if by whatever means you are being used by the enemy to bring division in the church. Then you should understand you are not walking by the spirit. If you are walking by the spirit, you will not bring division. See, as a pastor, sometimes I mentor people where the husband is with me, but the wife is not with me. And there was this couple in our church where the husband was a faithful son growing, uh, almost about to become a pastor in my church. And then the wife, he, she was completely against us. But the husband is like, no, 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 I'm standing, I'm taking a stand for my church. I'm taking a stand for my spiritual father. I will not leave this place. But I told him, I will never divide you from your wife. So I said, why don't you go find another church? See, I know that it was good that they stay with me. Yet, I can't be the reason to bring division among a husband and a wife. Because, see, my influence in their life is spiritual and it is a good influence. Yet, because it was causing division, I said, no, I can't be the reason for your division. Because any person that causes division is not of the spirit. Leader. He may look like a prayer warrior. They will come and whisper into your ears. 
they may even prophesy and they will say this is not good that is not good you know causing division sowing seeds of division that person is not of the spirit do you know how i know this it's in the bible this is in the word of god this is not me telling you the the book of jude the apostle jude he is writing to us saying anybody that causes divisions he is sensual and he is not of the spirit can you read that once more in hindi verse 19 mm-hmm. they, they are sharirik log the bible says fleshly people jisme pavitra atma nahi hai they don't have the holy spirit in them so may there be nobody in this place who will fall in this category I declare that there will be no division carriers in this place. If ever you are tempted to bring divisions, come and expose it immediately. Talk about it. So that we can, we can take you through the process of being filled by the Holy Spirit. because this church cannot experience divisions please remember we are all different people still it is the blood of jesus that holds us together if we are not together because we speak the same language we live in different homes different cultures still we come together because of jesus and if in between all of that there is a voice that is dividing me from my church If somebody comes and tells you, it's okay, brother, you can miss one Sunday. It's okay, you, you, can, you can come and play cricket with me. This only one Sunday. You know, when we, we are big fans of IPL. We are big fans of... I, I'm a big fan of cricket. <laughs> And, and I, I think it was uh, last year, I think, when the World Cup was going on, they said there is a match happening in Bangalore, but it is on a Sunday. And the problem is the match begins at 1, 1.30 in the afternoon. And we have to reach the stadium like early to, to make sure we enter in, do all the security, we are there from the beginning. If you, if you don't reach that early, you can't even get into the stadium. We got the tickets. Somebody sponsored the tickets. And later we got to know it's on a Sunday. I said nothing doing. All of our team members, they were, everybody said the same thing. We are, Sunday, there is no way we are going for a match on a Sunday. We really love cricket. But we are not going to allow cricket to divide us from the church. You know, there is one, one, one 
rule I have with, 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 in my traveling. I never travel on a Sunday. Even if I'm on a vacation, I, I have to find a church where I am vacationing so that on a Sunday I can go to church or else I don't go till Sunday. I come back on Saturday. And if, if we can honor the body of Christ like that, saying nothing will separate me from the body of Christ. You know, this morning I'm teaching you. I didn't come with a prophetic, uh, you know, blessing message. <laughs> Usually you've seen me do that. But this morning I decided to change what I'm going to give you. Because I felt the Lord wanting to correct us this morning. And when the Lord corrects us, that's also a blessing. When the correction comes, that is also prophetic. Do you believe that? Then let's finish with the last two verses. Verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now it is giving you something that you need to do. Till now it says, you know, this is, this is how the world lives. There are some people who will divide. They are not from the Holy Spirit. There are some people who have these actions, who have these manners and who have this speech. But now it is telling us what we should do. It says now you need to be constantly building yourself up on your most holy faith. We have to constantly keep strengthening ourselves. From Monday to Saturday, keep building. Don't wait for the pastor to come and build you. It says, you build yourselves. See, on a Sunday morning when you come to church, there will be a word of encouragement and somebody will encourage you. But that's different from you building yourself. You have to strengthen yourself. You have to pray for yourself. You have to speak this over yourself. You have to preach to yourself. You know one of the one of my favorite pastime is this. Pastime is to listen to my own sermons. Not because I love my voice. It is because I want to, I want to preach to myself. When I go back, I will listen to this word. And 
and i will i will say lord yes let me live like this sometimes when i read the word i i look into the mirror and i start preaching to myself praji this is your life you have to you have to do that this whole week build yourself don't wait for somebody else to come build you you build yourself look at your neighbor and say you build yourself you strengthen yourself the bible says david encouraged himself david did not have an instagram feed he was not on the church whatsapp group he had to encourage himself so he said bless the lord o my soul who is he singing it to himself all that is within me bless his name some of you need to know how to be your own pastor some of you have to become your own prophet <laughs> some of you need to teach yourself become your own worship leader look at your hand and say hand be lifted up <laughs> you tell yourself all that is within me worship his name i feel like 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 our generation is like a handicapped generation you know a handicapped person is depending on somebody to help him cross the road if only my pastor will preach about money if only my pastor would talk about healing no 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 you you preach to yourself you open your bible and you talk to yourself build yourself in your most holy faith and the second thing you need to do is pray in the holy spirit amen you cannot make praying in the holy spirit only a sunday morning activity you have to pray in the holy spirit throughout the week from monday to saturday you need to pray in the holy spirit that is why apostle paul says those who pray in the spirit he edifies himself paul paul he says when you prophesy you strengthen everybody else but when you pray in tongues you edify yourself in the natural your muscle din grow but your spiritual muscles are growing next time you are faced with the temptation you will be able to overcome hallelujah verse 21 and it says now keep yourselves in the love of god it says to hold yourself in the love of god apne aap ko parmeshwar ke prem mein banaye rakho when divisions are surrounding you jab bhinata aapke irgird hai when ungodliness surround you adharmikta jo hai aapke irgird hai let the love of god control you parmeshwar ka prem aapko aap mein banaye rahe because this love of god ki parmeshwar ka prem jo hai it it will it there is no expiry to the love of god 
there is no conditions to this love of God. The Bible says there is no heights, nor depths, nor angels, nor demons. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Yet, you have to keep yourself in that love. You have to remain filled with that love. When you are opening your mouth, you have to say, Am I speaking with the love of God? When you make certain actions, decisions, Am I doing this in the love of God? And the last thing he says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Mm. What does it say? No, don't just develop yourself in love. Keep looking for the mercy of God. When you find the mercy of God, you celebrate it. Do you know that you are here in church because of the mercy of God? It is not because you, you were very spiritual. You came here because God had mercy on you. So keep looking for opportunities to say yes to the mercy of God. Immediately jump and say, yes, yes, I am coming to the house of God. Yes, yes, I'll be on Zoom call praying with the entire church. Yes, yes, I'll be there for the Bible study. Because I want the mercy of God to locate me. Amen. I, I pray that you would just go back and meditate on these seven verses. Because when you meditate on it, you will receive so much more than what I have taught you today. Amen. Amen. I, I want you to say, Lord, this, this has to become flesh. These words has to manifest, become my character. It has to become my life. May I never become or look like an ungodly person. Because Jesus, he is coming. And when he comes, he will judge the ungodliness. And when he comes, he's going to judge the dividers of the church. Lord, give me the grace to build myself. Give me the grace to constantly pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord, give me the grace to bind myself with the love of God. Lord, give me the grace to constantly look for your mercy. Wherever I turn, give me graces, glimpses of your mercy. When I talk to my neighbors, let me find mercy. Lord, Lord, I pray that you would visit me during this week. Every action that I make, Lord, let, let me have a visitation of your presence.
can we i know we are already late but can we pray in the spirit for 3 4 minutes Three to four minutes. Just to quicken your insight. And then we will pray together. Are you ready? If you've never prayed in the spirit, if you don't know how to speak in an unknown language, then you have to just yield to the Lord. Let the Lord give you that gift today. that today you will begin to speak in an unknown language amen it is available for everybody this is not just for the pastors this is not only for spiritual people this is for everybody who is a child of god So I want all of us to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. But you need to ask. You need to say, Lord, come into my mouth. Fill my mouth. Let me, let me not speak the way that I spoke in the last one week. This next one week, I want to speak your words, Holy Spirit. So blow upon my mouth. No more of grumbling. I repent of my complaining. I repent of my boasting. I repent of my flattering. Now I invite you Holy Spirit to control my prayer life. Are you ready to pray? Don't pray in English or Hindi. Ask the Holy Spirit to pray through you. Those who can pray in the spirit, when I count to three, just pray in the loudest way you can. Those who cannot pray in the spirit, just open your mouth and, and receive from heaven. Open your mouth wide and I will fill you, says the Lord. Are you ready? Worship team, are you ready? Church, are you ready? This is also for all the children in this place. That if you if you children, if you want to pray in the spirit, you can open your mouth wide and allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. And, and may the Holy Spirit fill you right now. Are you ready church? Take a deep breath. Ready to release what's on the inside of you into this atmosphere. At the count of one, two, Three, pray, 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 pray. Just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Shabala kara da rabu sukuru buru basha dere. Shidi di da da rabu lo bo ro bo ro bo sera bala bala bara. Shada da rabala bo soko dere be. Hey, baby, be laga da ra handu rubo se ke de. Lando rubo ra 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 da rubo lo bo se de 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 de
Ribina mama 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 mando robo serebere la gadara dara la garaba la bo shuduru budini gele re 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 la daraba la bo se be 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 re 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 diri raraba la bo shubudiri bila seke diki na mama 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 mando robo derege Landurubusi ribira bala rada rada bolo boro boshe ne bere bere bere. Landurubusi ridi rada rara re 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 re. Lama na ma na ma na ma 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 in the name of Jesus, riba ba 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 shaka ba ra ba la bodo bodo re, he ba la manda ra ba sam do ra ba se re, la ka ra ba ra ba sa ba ra ba mbo ro bo se re, ha ba la bo se re 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 re. The next thing that we're going to pray is that this. Holy Spirit is going to overflow through you. The Bible says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. And your, your, your servants, they will start to begin to see visions. Your old men, they will start seeing dreams. So we are going to pray for an overflow of this presence of the Holy Spirit in this church. That this week onwards, there will be an overflow of visions, prophecies, dreams, revelations, special guidances from the Lord. I declare that from this Sunday till the next Sunday will be a special week in your dream realm. Everything that is fighting you shall be exposed in your dream realm. Your dreams are being sanctified today in Jesus' name. Your visions are being purified and, and sharpened in Jesus' name. Your ability to prophesy is, is being straightened out in Jesus' name. So I want you to keep your hand on your mouth and your ears. And say, so, Lord, I receive prophecies. I receive visions. Place your hand on your head and say, I receive dreams. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for an overflow in this place. We thank you that our sons and daughters will prophesy. We thank you for every young man and every old man in this place shall see dreams and visions. There will be an overflow of heaven encounters this week. It can't be that we receive the Holy Spirit and it doesn't manifest. We will have the ability to witness about Jesus. We will become carriers of the voice of heaven. From the front to the back, I, I declare in Jesus' name, let a, let a wave of manifestations begin.
let a wave of of holy spirit revelations begin I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am. The Holy Spirit says, I have not filled you with a spirit of fear. I have given you a spirit of power, love and sound mind. So every fear of power be overcome in Jesus name. Every fear of being loved be overcome in Jesus name. Every fear that is trying to not allow you to be self-controlled be broken in Jesus' name. Starting today, power, love and sound mind. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. this week I bless them with the grace to be able to lift themselves up in the spiritual realm Lord that they will have the grace to pray in the Holy Spirit from this Sunday till the next Sunday we thank you Lord that this church will grow in the love of God we thank you that you are going to give us uh, glimpses of your mercy during this week we receive this blessing 